What's happening guys? This is James Blom with MMOHuts.com with a follow-up to last week's top video list. Plenty of you were looking for a video list of the top 10 free-to-play third-person shooter games. And here it is. Once again, this list of games is based off variety, popularity, with some personal preferences mixed in, and they all scored pretty well on the MMOHuts game list ratings. So starting out our list at number 10, SD Gundam Capsule Fighter. Looking for a game with chibi versions of your favorite mobile suit Gundam fighters battling it out in a 3D environment at your disposal? Well, the developers at Softmax did. The game has over 300 completely customizable units built around melee, medium, and long-range combat types. With its multi-directional maps, a unique element is added to the game giving it not only that interesting third-person feel, but also melee action combat found in a lot of brawler games. The game might not be for everyone with its interesting super-deformed mechs, but for Gundam fans, it's a win. Next up for number 9, we've got Global Agenda. This will be our finest hour. Starting out as a pay-to-play game, Global Agenda is a team-based shooter with classes and several other RPG elements. The game has enormous depth with gameplay focused around intense yet simple PvP and PvE missions, not to mention the fight for complete territorial control of a persistent world. There are a lot of things that newer MMOs have picked up from this game, and supposedly a sequel to the game is in the workings. However, with Hi-Riz putting all their fuel into Smite, it may be a little while before we see a game like Global Agenda 2 surface. Falling into number 8 is Microvolts. I've always thought this game had a cool concept seeing that it brought back the childhood days of playing with action figures. You know, kind of like the movie Small Soldiers. The game is classless, but it does allow players to access seven different weapon types with hundreds of game updates introducing modified themed versions of these seven core weapons. Over the time frame the game has been released, it's introduced 11 different PvP and team-based game modes along with 21 themed maps. So needless to say, the game does a great job of staying up to date. They seem to always be introducing new content in small patches, but every once in a while they have a large patch like the recent Surge update that's been implemented as a direct result of their community feedback, changing things like the user interface and making the game overall more competitively balanced. Unfortunately, some of the latest updates have also introduced new bugs trying to fix the old ones, so hopefully later on that'll get worked out. Number 7 on the list is Battlefield Heroes. Now, this game has grabbed a huge audience due to it being somewhat of the cartoon version of the other Battlefield games, but it's also the first of EA's Play for Free lineup. The game features three playable classes, each having unique abilities that can be compared to skills in other games, all of which players can upgrade over time. Coming from the original developers of a series that usually focuses on cutting-edge, realistic first-person shooters, Battlefield Heroes does a pretty decent job as a much more casual third-person shooter. Loadout comes in at number 6, sporting a similar but 10 times more gory graphic style as Battlefield Heroes, Loadout's name says it all. This game combines the gun customization of Blacklight Retribution, the cartoony comical theme of Team Fortress 2, with the fast paced action of a game like Tribes Ascend. The weapon customization in the game is way over the top and somewhat hilarious when combined with the game's animation style, adding modules that change the elemental properties, let alone the ammunition itself. It's not odd to find players running around with hypodermic needles sticking all over their body or nearly half their flesh missing. It's without a doubt entertaining, now it just needs a little bit more content as far as game modes and maps and whatnot to keep boosting the player base. They did a good job recently, they added the first iteration of the skill based matchmaking system to the game. Not bad. Now this next one was a bit of a tough call, but number 5 is Firefall. Alright, so let's face it, we've all been watching Firefall for the past few years, waiting for it to come out of Forever Beta, and now that it has... Well, we went from saying this game is going to be epic to it's got potential. Now, from a third-person shooter standpoint, I can say that the mechanics are spot on. It's fast-paced, visually pleasing, and the jump jets and various battle frames are the icing on that cake. Now, the battle frame customization is pretty notable as well, but the game might have gotten ahead of itself when it launched. It seems to have left its content sitting in bags at the front door. Despite all that, it's still a grand third-person shooter worthy of a spot on this list. More time, Firefall. More time. This next one, however, has had its time, and it's still going. Number 4 is S4 League. S4 League is another popular fast-paced sci-fi shooter that's been around for a little while, featuring seven popular game modes, most with a unique twist, like Touchdown, sort of like Capture the Flag crossed with American Football. The game has decent competition as well as strategic variety with its seven classes, each sporting unique weapons and supernatural skills. And it's the only third-person shooter with a catchy electro beat playing to the background to help set the pace of the match. Visuals are good, the customization options are vast, and to this day, the player base is pretty impressive. Ghost Recon Online claims the number 3 spot on the list. Now we do this my way. Now, this Tom Clancy game is a tactical cover-based shooter heavily focused around teamwork. Sporting technology set in the not-too-distant future, kinda like Blacklight Retribution, players can customize their weapons, choose from three different classes, and use objects around them for cover. 
Now, working with your team is a huge strong point in this game. You really can't win otherwise, but it's the best feature in the game because it's built around it. The class's skills are focused around team operation. Plus, there's a cool system implemented that lets players visually know where their allies are, even if they're not in plain sight. Ghost Recon Online gives you the power to gain advantageous positions over your enemies and utilize real-world squad tactics to achieve victory. Now, I can say there aren't too many games like this next one. Number two is APB Reloaded. With this, you don't need GTA Online. You've already got it. Okay, maybe not, but it's close. Focused around PvP, it offers just as much intense action, crazy nice graphics, and customization as most buy-to-play titles. In fact, in 2010, you had to buy it to play it. The game itself is like a city in chaos, with up to 100 people in one instance as criminals or enforcers. Okay, so it's a little shy when it comes to actual content, but it already topped our best customization chart, so it sure doesn't lack there. This is a game where you could spend hours on the customization alone, much less the gameplay itself. And finally, that brings us to our number one choice, which of course is Warframe. Coming from a small development team with pretty big ideas, Warframe is literally everything that comprises an elite third-person shooter. The game is primarily based on co-op missions, but never has it been this fun joining up with a bunch of randoms to take down enemies, much less playing with friends. The game puts a space ninja twist on the genre, providing players with special abilities, awesome melee maneuvers, as well as a unique parkour system used to evade enemies, get past obstacles, or just plain look badass. The graphics in the game are some of the best that I've ever seen in the free-to-play market, and the map layouts randomly generate, adding to the game's strategy along with the randomly generated mission types and minigames. Okay, sure, the view can get a bit repetitive at times, but they've been spitting out enough content to kind of solve that. They've already started adding PvP, which is something the community has been demanding from the start. They started with the dueling in the dojos, and they expanded it to the conclaves. I've got to say the modifications, warframe, and weapon progression is well done, and all the equipment in the game can be obtained without spending money. It just takes forever. But there's no doubt that Digital Extremes is building up a really unique and polished third-person shooter, and that's what makes it number one on MMO Hut's top 10 free-to-play third-person shooters. And once again, there are plenty more noteworthy third-person shooters on the market, but for this video, I also wanted to keep it to games with soldier-like avatars. So even though games like War Thunder, Star Conflict, and you know the wargaming games are technically considered third-person shooters, and are in fact awesome, I'll save those for another top video list. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments below what third person shooters also kick ass and deserve attention. If you're looking for more info on the games on the list, check the links in the description below for the individual game profiles at mmohuts.com. But until next time guys, that's going to be it for me. I'm James Blonde. See you out there gamers.